What is going on people? Terry here with Blunt Trips. Today is October 15th and that means it's getting close to Halloween, my favorite time of year. And today we're going to do a special video because a lot of people cover like haunted houses and spirit Halloween costumes but not too many people cover candy. So today we're going to take a tour inside the Hammond Candy Factory which is about 100 years old and we're going to learn how they make candy. So let's go check it out. take a walk over here through the store real quick we got a few minutes before the tour starts give you guys an idea of some of the brands that they sell from this factory hopefully it's not too crowded in here I know Casey and Raven are in here somewhere oh there they are but uh, this factory does tours every 15 or 30 minutes actually you might want to check that out if you come to the Denver area just a quick reminder before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, be sure to do so. And if you're liking this video so far, go ahead and finger bang that button below. Of course, anytime we cover somewhere, we always try to get souvenirs. And what would this be without some candy? So let's go take a walk around the store and check this place out. Now, I know this factory makes everything from lollipops to chocolate, um, candy canes, Halloween candy, jelly beans, pretty much any type of candy you could think of. They probably have some type of brand or name out there in the grocery stores in your local market. Some people probably see $12.95 a pound of candy right now and are saying, whoa, that's a lot for a pound. But uh, keep in mind, this is the factory. You're getting it uh, quick. It's fresher. Oh, look, candy canes. Uh, I'm sure they're going to be probably spitting a lot of them out right about now with the holiday season coming up. A lot of candy canes. But as I was saying, $12.95 isn't really a lot when you uh, think about how fresh it is right here at the factory. Plus, you're in a city that has a minimum wage of 15 and most jobs start around 18 or higher here. So $12.95 a pound of candy isn't really high when you're making like a special day of it. I know some states like Florida and like Alabama, Mississippi, you know, wages aren't as high and people there are probably thinking that is a lot for a pound of candy, but uh, here in Denver, Colorado, that's really not a lot. Got some more hard candies here, lollipops, things like that. I'm not really a candy eater, I won't lie. Uh, I do not eat much candy at all. In fact, I don't eat much at all in general uh, when I do a lot of protein but I know a lot of people do eat candy 
That's one reason why I wanted to cover this. Not just that, but Halloween around the corner, and then we got Christmas. And I figured this would be a good vlog to do, covering how candy canes are made and lollipops and all that. Watching my kid come over here and get some candy. Warheads. Let's see. For those who can't see, she's showing me a Pennywise candy. They make warheads. I know a lot of you like warheads. Let me get moving here before this kid starts asking me for my credit card. She'll be asking me for every piece of candy in this store. Uh, now, I do eat some candy with my kid every now and then. She'll bring some gummies and stuff. Let me get moving. She's ch chasing me right now. Ask me for something. But I'll eat, like... Some candies with her every now and then. Sour candies mostly. Me and her will share some sour candies, sour gummies, things like that. But uh, again, I'm just not a big candy eater. Now, I do want to cover one detail about this factory that they probably will not cover during the tour. For those um, that are curious about what it pays here, I did look online and starting here, jobs starting here pay around 19 starting. And there was some jobs I've seen as much as 22 an hour. So it, it pays fairly decent here at this candy factory. I did look that up online to get an idea. I do want to apologize if my phone's getting in the way of the camera. I'm using my phone and a body camera. To record for two different uh, social media outlets one's for YouTube and then I do shorts on um, Instagram and stuff so if you're seeing my phone in the in the view on the YouTube version I do apologize my uh, body cams literally right below my face so oh, here's our Halloween candies Just past the jelly beans. Everybody knows jelly beans. But they are getting ready to start this tour here soon, so I do need to start heading back towards the lobby so I don't miss that. So let's go ahead and start heading that way. I'm in that store running from Raven so she didn't ask me for my credit card to buy something and I forgot I had already given her mom the credit card earlier before we got here so she could get something for Raven and that kid is still chasing me down asking me for something okay, thank you All right, bear with me, people. I got two cameras and a 24-ounce coffee I'm holding, so I'll try and be as steady as possible. Welcome to Hammond's Candies, America's largest maker of handmade candy. We've been doing it the old-fashioned way for over 90 years because we love the process and the dedication it takes to make our classic candy. Every morning, I am so excited to come into the factory and see our candy being made. Pretty soon, you will understand why Hammond's Candies is so special, as history is being made right before your eyes. Before heading inside to see it for yourself, we wanted to give you a sweet trip back to where we got started, where we've been, and how, although we've grown from one employee to over 300, we've worked really hard to maintain the feel of a small, family-run business. Hammond's Candies was founded in 1920. Carl T. Hammond used his experience working for other candy manufacturers and started his own company. The first factory was located at 15th and Black. There he created his famous recipes, handcrafted the candy, 
and sold it in a small storefront. One thing that made Carl's ribbon candy, candy canes, and other hard candies stand apart was his belief that nothing is more important than quality. This philosophy helped him survive not only the Great Depression, but competition worldwide. Some of the original equipment purchased by Carl is still used on the factory floor today. He bought the equipment from a traveling salesman, candy company that no longer needed the equipment, Amazon.com, <laughs> The right answer is B. He bought the equipment from candy companies that no longer needed their machines. Ever the shrewd businessman, Carl saw the financial advantage of purchasing used equipment. Although now many of Carl's original machines are over 100 years old, some of the machines are hard to maintain and often impossible to find parts for, we still use them today because they make a higher quality candy and they are a constant reminder that our past is what drives our business. By the 1930s, Carl had developed and honed his candy making skills to handcraft and sell over 150 varieties of sweets, from chocolates to hard candies. His favorite candy was one that was made by his close friend. Not only did he purchase the recipe, but he named the candy after him. The Mitchell Sweet, a fluffy marshmallow wrapped in rich, buttery caramel, is one of our signature candies, and today it has been in continual production at Hammond's for almost 90 years. The amount of time it takes to make one Mitchell Sweet, you could drive a car from Denver to Lincoln, Nebraska, Los Angeles, California, New York City, and back nearly two times, or all the way around the earth. The right answer is C. Denver to New York City and back nearly two times. There's a good reason why Hammonds has such a family feel today. From a very early age, Carl's two children were involved in the business. During the late 40s and 50s, Carl and his son Tom ran Hammonds together in a new, much bigger factory on 29th Avenue. Eventually, Tom and his wife June took over the company and continued to expand as demand for their candy grew. Their five young children pitched in where they could, especially in the candy tasting department. Robin, their only daughter, her husband, Emery Dorsey, and June ran Hammonds after Tom passed away. The late 80s through the 90s saw big growth for Hammonds as expert candy maker Emery, along with Robin and June, continued the tradition of creating high quality handmade candy the same way it was made by Carl. After national media recognition, William Sonoma and others came calling. Huge orders were placed for hand-twirled lollipops, freshly made almond toffee, and sweet peppermint pillows. The number of employees grew substantially, and Hammonds went from a local candy company to a truly national brand. Every batch of lollipops we make starts off as a 70 to 90 pound batch. To turn this batch into 1,000 lollipops, the cook must wait until it cools and then hit it with a large hammer. Ask everyone in the factory to stop what they're doing and run and help. Drop the bundle into the magic lollipop machine and then wait for them to come out the other end. Or pull, cut, and twist until the whole batch is gone. The right answer is D. Pull, cut, and twist until the entire batch is gone. When we say handmade, we mean it. In order to make candy at Hammond's, cooks must be trained anywhere from six months to two years. Once qualified, each cook makes at least five batches of candy per day, even more during the holiday season. They are responsible for their own batches from beginning to end, which means pulling, twisting, and cutting several thousand times per day. The national attention Hammonds was getting meant increased demands on holiday candy production, a cornerstone of the business since the beginning. In order to keep stockings filled, 
year-round Christmas candy production began. This, of course, requires special humidity-controlled warehouses to keep candy canes, ribbon candy, art candy, peppermint pillows, and other holiday candy fresh until the holidays, even if it was made in February. Candy canes get their brilliant colors from being pulled on the candy puller, which traps air and incorporates it into the candy to lighten the color and texture. The other important thing that happens while the candy is on the puller is flavoring is added. The cook takes a lunch break. Chocolate chips are added. The batch is taste tested. The right answer is A. The flavor is added. Only the center part of the candy is flavored, which happens when on the candy puller. It only takes 1.5 ounces to flavor an entire 70 pound batch. Strawberry, bubblegum, cinnamon, pomegranate, gingerbread, pumpkin pie, and birthday cake are just a few of the more than 30 candy cane flavors we make. The exact same way Carl did back when Hammonds began. In 1999, after a 79-year run and thousands of pounds of delicious candy, June and family decided it was time to sell the business. In came Ralph Nafsaker and Partners, fresh out of Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory. With their prior candy experience, Ralph and his team turned the company into the largest handmade hard candy manufacturer in the United States. Hammonds went from a local candy manufacturer to a truly national brand when Andrew Schumann, a candy lover with a similar entrepreneur zeal as Carl, took over the company in 2007. Since then, the company has quadrupled and several nostalgic candy brands that fit within our culture and philosophy were acquired. Our purchase of Macross candies brought with it the top secret recipe of this company's famous flat taffy. In 2013, we were able to purchase Old Dominion Peanut Company a 100-year-old company that is the largest maker of peanut brittle in the world. We have also recently increased production to include chocolate bars, cotton candy, and popcorn, as well as all-natural versions of our most popular candy. Today, Hammond's candies are available at a wide range of national chains, as well as 3,500 mom and pops, and over 30,000 retail stores around the world. Now that you have a better idea of who we are and where we've been, it's time to see how it's done. Keep in mind, every day is different on the Hammonds factory floor, so you'll only see a few different candies being made. Feel free to come back again so you can see how we make all of our yummy candies. Let's go see how handmade candy is made the Hammonds way. Hopefully you were able to hear that pretty well, and uh, the camera's too shaky. Oh, it's a little loud right here. But uh, all right, let's go ahead over and check out the factory. Welcome, guys. So over here on the far left, there's a bench for our smaller kiddos to use, and then there's two benches here in the front as well. Now, guys, there um, is a table here on the left there. The cook is pulling this batch of some of our lollipops. And I have the top view of that table right here above your heads. All right. So how the process starts for any hard candy baking, on the right-hand side of the kitchen, they fill the copper kettles with water, sugar, and corn syrup. I'm going to change my image really quick here. There we go. There is also a batch here right in front of the window here under the television. If anyone wants to come on over here, and there is a bench on that right-hand side for my kiddos to use over here as well. All right. So as I was saying, how the process starts on the right-hand side of the kitchen, they fill the copper kettles with water, sugar, and corn syrup. Now they'll let the mixture cook until it reaches 324 degrees. Now when the batch is done cooking, an alarm will sound telling the cooks it's time to pour out their batch. And the batch gets poured out onto one of the flat gray tables you see straight in, and those are called the cooling tables. Now when the batch is first poured out onto the cooling table, the cook will do a couple 
couple different things. The first thing he does is add the colors for his match. And the color is added on the right-hand side of that blue table. Now on the left-hand side, this is where the cook will add in any recycle from a previous batch that may not have been able to be used. So when I talk about recycle, if you look over to the left-hand side where Marcus is pulling this batch of lollipops, there's a huge pile there on that table that's been set aside. That is what we call the recycle. It will get melted into another batch. Now guys, over here on the right of this red candy color here, Ryan is adjusting the colors for his batch. Right now he's creating the white stripe. Now he's also drizzling flavor right over the top of it. So if you see how this is rotating, that's incorporating air into that piece. And it will get lighter and lighter the longer this rotates. Now that flavor got drizzled right over the top. And he has to leave this on the polar for as long as he can to get it to churn as light as possible. So it's on there for up to a full minute or more, typically. Now he's going to bring it back over to the table here in front of the window. And I do have that top view, as I said earlier, guys, right above your head so you can see what that looks like. Now this table is called the construction table. And he's going to start piecing his stripes together first. The stripes are what we call the jacket. Now the part that has the recycled candy in it is going to become the middle of your candy cane, your lollipop. And the middle is called the core. And over here where Fernando just had that pink piece on that green puller, as you can see at his table, he already has his stripes all put together. But now he just flavored the middle, the core that had that recycled in it. So that pink piece will become the middle of his candy. Now the batches you see being worked on are 220 degrees, very, very hot. And there's a flame on every one of our tables that's going to keep that batch nice and hot so it will stay soft. So the cook can adjust the flame kind of like your grill at home. They can turn it up or down as needed. Now the gloves you see the cooks wearing protect their hands from all of that heat. Now these are specially made gloves so that they protect the candy as well. So these are specially made so that no particles or lint from the gloves will get into that hot sticky candy. Now the scissors that cooks use are their most important tool. The scissors are used for every part of their job. Some of the scissors are two pounds of hair. And those heavy scissors are used to cut through very thick pieces of candy. Now each batch weighs about 100 pounds and it will make about 700 candy canes or about a thousand of our one ounce lollipops. That's what Marcus is pulling over here on the left. This is one of our candy corn flavored lollipops. And you guys will always know what flavor you're eating by the color and the stripes. Now we make over 30 flavors of hard candy and every flavor goes along with a specific color and stripe pattern. Now Brian here in front of the window is going to start getting these stripes all put together. He's going to pull that to make sure it's long enough. And he'll just keep smoothing it out. Now over on the left where Marcus is pulling this batch, there are lines on that table so he knows exactly where to cut his pieces. Now the batch he's pulling of those lollipops is rotating on that table. And that rotation is what has helped twist those stripes for him. Because when he first put his batch on this batch roller, the stripes were straight up and down. But as it is rotated, it has helped to twist those stripes. Now he'll cut the pieces and hand them over to the ladies next to him. And they put that beautiful swirl into the lollies and then the stick goes in. Now every so often they'll place a piece on the scale. So if anything is incorrect, the weight, the shape, anything, it will get set aside to get recycled. Otherwise, these lollipops will head on down the line. Now in the center of that conveyor belt, you're gonna get put into a little plastic wrap and at the very end, you're going to get sealed. So they only take about 30 seconds to cool off. So it's a very fast process once they get down the line. 
Now the ladies who help out the cook are the ladies from our packaging area. They rotate into our kitchen to help them put the hooks into the canes or the sticks into those lollipops. All right, so Brian has his stripes all put together here. Now he's going to take the remainder of the batch and he's going to bring that back over to the puller and he's going to add more flavor to it. So the white stripe has that little bit of flavor, but the middle, the core, has the most flavor. So it's white and you're tasting more flavor. Now he's just going to bring that back over to that red over here on the right and he'll just get that balance on those arms and that machine is foot pedal activated so he can have his hands free to balance that handy. Let me go ahead and I'm going to change my image so you guys can see the top view of that puller for those of you that cannot see through the video. There we go.
So he's just going to get some chocolate and he's going to bring it over and he is going to spread that over the top of this. I always ask him to bring us the bowl and they will never bring us the bowl. I just don't understand. All right, so he's just going to spread that chocolate right over the top. Now we also have another filled cane as well. It's a cookie flavored cane with white cream in the middle. And closer to Christmas time, they'll also have a cinnamon cane with white cream in the middle of that. Now this is a non-dairy cream filling that he's filling this with. So he's going to just roll it up inside this pink part. He'll make sure to seal the ends so none of that escapes. And then he'll wrap the stripes around it. So it's kind of like a double-decker burrito once he gets this all wrapped up. All right, guys, so we do need to start heading down the hall. Does anyone have any questions for me at all? Yeah. So that's the recycle. So as I said, he'll melt, yep, it'll go right into another batch. Yep, so they use every part of it. Yep. All right, guys, so we are going to head on down the hall. There are two benches at the end for my smaller friends to use. Please do not take any candy out of the baskets. I will be handing you out candy when we're done. Thank you so much. I'm trying to run over here real quick so I can get a good spot. Check out some factory workers. They didn't wave hi, but they meant to. Anyways, I'm trying to move real fast so I can get over here in this corner. See out both windows. At this point, I'm racing kids for a good spot. I know I said I'm not really into candy, but seeing all this candy is starting to give me the munchies. Real quick, just a quick reminder, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It does help. And again, if you haven't subscribed, be sure to go ahead and click that button as well. There's actually quite a bit of people on this tour. And again, they do these tours every 30 minutes, so if you're in the Denver area, be sure to schedule this on your trip. All right. So guys, everything in this room is done by hand. They take turns working on all the different projects. So one group might be labeling, one group putting bows onto lollipops. It all kind of varies from day to day. Now over here on the right hand side, there's a whole group over here working on some of those canes for Trader Joe's. Um, those canes get shrink wrapped and then they get put into a second wrap. And that's what they're doing over here. They're getting those all put into that second wrap. And that second wrap has like a little hole in the top, so those will be hung up in the stores. And that goes to every Trader Joe's all over the country. Now over here in front of the window, let me see what they're working on today. Okay, so they're still, they've been doing this for the last few weeks. This table in front of the window here is a huge order we have for Target. Target is our biggest customer that we have. And you'll see all these totes on the corner here with all those lollipops inside. This is a classic peppermint lollipop for Target. We make several items for them in every Target store. So we do these lollipops. The second table back, there's some round white tins. Those are a Christmas mix of four Christmas candies for Target as well. We also do candy canes. We do marshmallow, popcorn, and we also do a lot of peppermint straw for Target as well. So lots of goodies for those stores. Now, if you guys can see in the center, I'm not sure if you can, there's a lady in a green hoodie. She's feeding these green sticks into that machine there. That is a candy chipper. And those big, long sticks she has, those are going to be art candy. So those are pieces of candy. When you turn them to the side, you will see a picture of them. So they come down the line, and then once they get down here, they're hardened. And then she feeds those into that machine, and then they spread those onto trays. And actually, that is part of the mix that's going in those Christmas tins there. So that one is just a, it's a red and a white stripe, and it has a green um, cover around that, like around the edges, or around the, um, it's the jacket is the green part. So the, the red and white stripes are supposed to resemble Santa's elves socks, is what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> so, all right guys, I'm gonna show you a couple things above your heads on the screen here. 
So this is our popcorn room. They're not working on popcorn today, but I just wanted you guys to see this area with the three giant poppers there. This always makes the building smell amazing when they pop corn. So each of these poppers will pop about five gallons of popcorn. And we have some great flavors of popcorn in our store. We have the sriracha cheddar, we have birthday cake, chocolate, cheesy pizza, honey peanut. So we got lots of great flavors of popcorn if you guys like popcorn. And I'm going to change my image one more time, and we're just going to look at one other area. Now, typically on the weekends, they do not work on popcorn or marshmallow, so I apologize you're not seeing anything being done back there. But I still want you guys to see this big table here that I'm showing you on the screen. This is where they make those Mitchell sweets you heard about on the video. This table is in the very back of this room along the wall. It's as long as a big yellow school bus, and it holds 250 gallons of liquid marshmallow. So for those Mitchells, they'll put down wax paper, and then they will cover that with the marshmallow, spread it all out, make it nice and smooth. Then it will set and rise for 24 hours, so it fluffs up. Once that is done, they will cut it into long 14-inch strips, and those strips are hand-dipped into caramel. That caramel sets again for 24 hours, and then they will cut those by hand into two-inch pieces that are individually wrapped. And those are the Mitchell sweets, our most popular treat. And uh, definitely, I would give those a try. They are definitely delicious. Does anybody have any questions about the packaging area? You just want some goodies, right? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to hand you guys out some candy canes. They are broken. They are samples. So um, they are easier to eat when they're broken anyway. I promise they will still taste delicious. We do ask you guys to not eat anything in the store. We really would appreciate that just because it gets very messy. So if you guys can wait to eat any of your goodies, we really appreciate that. Thank you so much, and I will be handing those out on our way out. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.